Good morning, Brussels. Welcome to this 12th edition of the Jam Forum. Thank you so much for being here. So in 12th edition, it is the first time that we do organize Jump on the 8th of March. 8th of March, it is still needed. It is still needed to be celebrated. 8th of March uh, was inspired by a politician, a German politician, a women's rights activist whose name was, is Clara Zetkin. She was a very big friend of Rosa Luxemburg. And so when we say International Women's Day, that could be Fête de la Femme, a celebration of women. No, it's absolutely not the case. It's not the celebration of women, even if I think we need a very big celebration. But this is, this is not the case for International Women's Day. This is why two years ago, the French Minister for Equal Rights said we need to change the name uh, of, of that day from International Women's Rights, let's say International Women's Rights Day. It says much more about what it is. Because we can celebrate, of course, the fact that for the first time in the history of humanity, women have the same rights as men. The same, it's the first time, but only for a small part of the world, unfortunately. And um, this day must remember to everybody that it is not because we have the same rights that we have achieved real equality. Rights are absolutely necessary, but they are not sufficient. The topic of today's uh, 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 GEM Forum is about the sharing of power. And this is one one, one, one domain where we do see that we don't have equality. When we look at the political power, when we look at the economic power, it gives more or less the same impression. For the countries that are part of the United Nations, uh, only 5% of the head of states are women. We take away the queens, and the president that might not have an executive uh, responsibility, 5%. When we do the comparison with the economic world, we have to 2 to 3% of CEOs of our companies, of our big companies. I'm, I'm not speaking about entrepreneurs. I'm really speaking about top, top, really top managers of the companies. 2 to 3% of CEOs that are women in the EU and in overall OECD countries, which is absolutely nothing. When we look at the members of the parliament uh, in the countries of the United Nations, 23% only of them are women. And when we look at the number of women in the executive committees of our big companies, we have figures between 10% and 15% in the EU, which is absolutely nothing. In Belgium, uh, in the last uh, ranking of the World Economic Forum, um, we, we are much worse than last year. We were at the position 24, and now we are at the position uh, 31. 31, why so? We have four dimensions in that gender equality index. And the two dimensions that make us uh, 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 decreasing in the ranking is only the place of the decline of women as leaders in the economic world and the political world. This is why I like this picture and what, and what is said. Equality is like driving a car up the hill. You have to keep your foot on the accelerator, otherwise you roll back down the hill really quickly. This is what we will try to do today. I need to remind you maybe that women are the majority of the population. We are 51 or 52 percent of the population globally. But especially in Europe, we are 60 percent of the graduates. That means that we are the biggest talent pool. 
The share of power, thus, is a question of social justice, of fairness, even of meritocracy. But not only. Um, maybe I wouldn't have said that some years ago, but I really do think that share of power nowadays represents the preservation of our democratic model. What if the share of power could change the culture of power and its practice? We never try to do that. People, you guys, uh, you are very angry. I am angry too. We are sick uh, uh, by these leaders that are too uh, self-centered, uh, arrogant, often inefficient, uh, and that do excesses of all kinds. We are angry. Since we, we, we might, because of that anger, we might uh, uh, put at risk the, our democratic model that we have built since the World War II. We see the progression everywhere of hegemonic powers, of hegemonic leaders, narcissistic leaders. Women are the first victims of these leaders, men and women. Men and women as leaders, but women are the biggest victims of it. Because they are the victim of the, of the perversion of, of, of this kind of power. Uh, this is what we do see with sexual harassment, with sexism in politics, in the society. Uh, in, uh, in our companies, the Me Too phenomenon is only the result, the consequence of this hegemonic power. Men do still earn nowadays 40% of wealth more than women. So we are also the poorest, even in our country, this is the figure only for the European Union. The st many studies show that uh, we choose, we tend to choose leaders with a disproportionate level of confidence. Self-centered leaders. In our society, we usually try to, uh, tend to judge badly women when we say they lack of ambition, they are not assertive enough, uh, they, should be, they should have more self-confidence. But why are we saying that? Can't we say something else? That leaders maybe uh, could be inspired by humility. Uh, maybe we could blame that too much of self-confidence that makes some excesses, that, uh, uh, put them, uh, that, that, that bring them to, to, to uh, do bad choices and to enter the society. Blindness of power. We know all the studies say exactly the same, that good leaders are leaders that are able to build and maintain a team at the top, uh, that they can inspire the, uh, this team, that they can engage them around a project. What is said in the studies is that women tend to have these capabilities more than men. Why so? because we tend to have a better level of emotional intelligence. But pay attention, it's not because our biological sex, it is not uh, because of our, our, our hormones uh, that, we have, uh, that we tend to have more emotional intelligence. It's because of our position in the society. We are the second sex. Our society is still based on a hierarchy between men and women. Even if it is changing, slowly it is changing, but we have, uh, we have still that problem. There is um, uh, David Graeber that says something that is very interesting. Uh, this guy is a, a professor at the London School of Economics, and he says, it is power that creates stupidity. Studies show that the more impo uh, impoverished people are the more that can identify other people's emotions. The rich have no idea what other people are feeling. 
Whereas, if you are poor, you need to know what your boss has in mind. In a patriarchal structure, women have to spend time working on what goes through the minds of men. So, we are the second sex, so maybe it's because of that that we tend, following the studies, the researches, to be more creative, to be more capable of finding good solutions, to be better at, at communication, to attach more importance in building the skills uh, of the members of, of our team. McKinsey, uh, in, the, in the report, annual reports, which is called Women Matter, and I do for sure you know them. Uh, some years ago they said that uh, it's really women that tend to have the more capabilities to find the solutions to the challenges that our organizations find. I'm not sure about that. I really do think that it's the mix between men and women. I don't think that women are intrinsically better than men. It's because really of their position in the society that we have different lives, and that means that we have different and different perspectives and riches, team, of course. But we tend, nevertheless, when a woman gets at, at the top, we tend to uh, expect from her that she adopts traditional style behaviors of leadership, even if it's counterproductive or dysfunctional. To end, I would say that feminism is humanism. We need to speak today on the 8th of March of feminism. Feminism is not a bad word. Feminism wants only to replace that hierarchy in the society, that hierarchy of sexes, by sharing those areas that are still the domain, predominantly the, do the domain of women, which are money, which are uh, politics, property, religion, security, and companies. It is about sharing and not replacing one domination by another. This is the biggest civilization uh, uh, change that we are living. Let's change the culture of power by sharing it between women and men. Let's reinvent leadership today to make it a leadership more inclusive, more responsible. Those societies that share the most are also the ones that prosper the most and where well-being is at the highest. Power sharing is really the prerequisite to have a big change. And this change is to go from the love of power to the power of love. So I wish you a wonderful day uh, thinking about it.